Hey there guys, it's Metro, and with BlizzCon about one full day away, I wanted to give my concise thoughts and predictions on what we would expect from its main announcements. BlizzCon has been up and down for World of Warcraft for the last two years, but this time we most certainly will be expecting a lot of WoW-focused news, and hopefully a return to the main focus of BlizzCon being around Warcraft. So without any further ado, let's get right into the predictions. I predict there will not be a new expansion. No, I'm just kidding. That would be funny, right? Obviously, there will be a new expansion to announce, but what will the theme of it be? That's the main question. I'd say Void and Old Gods, but what about Ajara and the Naga from Legion? Does their tomb storyline conclude properly? I'm not somebody who follows the lore too heavily, although I've been interested in it more recently. So you guys will have to tell me, does the way the Naga storyline end in Legion make sense? Or is there something that's certainly left open to continue in next expansion? You see, it's hard to say definitively, but I will be casting one one vote for Old Gods as both a theme and the title, mostly because of the many nods that we saw from Ilganoth and 7.3. Obviously, things like the Dark Below and the Legacy of the Void are already taken, so what else could it be? I'm hoping for something short, like Legion was. I think a one-word title is very powerful, but what would make sense for this expansion? Perhaps World of Warcraft Twilight. Very mysterious sounding. Also, World of Warcraft Shadowfall is another thing I've heard a few times on various leaks. So with the obvious out of the way, what will they announce in terms of major features? Or will they just announce some themes like they did at Gamescom a while back? I think three to four major features will be announced, but not a full in-depth look like we might have seen at past BlizzCons, especially for Missa Pandaria and Draenor. Perhaps more will come at whatever the earliest major convention is next year. Would that be Gamescom? I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, the first major piece I expect to hear about is the artifacts. I think this is one of the most important things about moving forward. And I would not be surprised if they said they aren't ready to tell us exactly how we lose the artifacts at this point. But I do believe it will have something to do with the Antorus events. Lots of people think that they'll either get broken by Argus the, Unma- Argus the Unmaker, the mythic encounter, or by the world stuff going on at the Wound in Silithus. One way or another, losing the artifact is going to be a very big deal, so let's hope it's equally epic. The second major piece they're going to have to announce at BlizzCon is the lore. What will be the driving force behind the expansion? I think that this will depend heavily on how Legion ends, and of course what the expansion ultimately ends up being, but my number one prediction is a heavy focus on female character leads, especially from our side. Based on the Antorus 7.3.2 audio, it seems like the Windrunner sisters will be meeting up, and the audio says that there is only one place that it can happen. To me, that seems like Quelth the Lost, their home, but if they do use that, I hope it's altered in some way from how it is in the TBC storyline. Surely by now, the Blood Elf starting zone would be starting to repair itself, right? I also expect Jaina to make an announcement and an appearance somewhere in BlizzCon. I think I saw a picture of her as a lead on the BlizzCon poster, so I could expect her reoccurrence to be something that could be very important for the expansion. All of this leads us to our third major point, which I'm going to call a recommitment to Azeroth. Make Azeroth great again, maybe, you might call it. We spent a long time focusing on threats outside of Azeroth in the last two expansions, and I think the pre-Legion invasion technology and the world quests that we saw from the in-game micro-holidays shows that we are definitely ready for this. Ian Hazakostas has also stated a few times that he agrees that scaling tech would fit in nicely for leveling, most recently in the 7.3 interview. So this alone would be what I expect to see. I have, however, made a detailed video on a Mythic Plus leveling concept. That would be one of my two major things I would love to see at BlizzCon. If they reworked leveling in a way that made it challenging yet fun, I think they would immediately see more player engagement, especially among new and returning folk. The problem with this, though, is that it would take players away from the endgame, and I think we are entirely moved on from worrying about anything other than the endgame at this point. Instead, a fair compromise to me would be to scale all the zones up to a top level. I would say 100. This allows you to level as you please and then go from 100 to 110 in the Legion storyline, which will lead directly into 110 to potentially 120, whatever the new expansion is. Maybe they'll also alter the story or makeup of a few of the zones. That'd be nice. Kind of like what happened with Silithus, although it seems like there is tech in the game already to switch back to old Silithus, which makes me think that Silithus won't permanently be changing, perhaps like the Blasted Lands did. And they'll also probably add some world quests so max level characters have a reason to be in these zones again these are another uh, very important thing that need to happen if you ask me because early on 
there was a lot of stuff going on in the Legion beta that kind of made me think that this is what they were going for. Uh, and it's one thing that they kind of teetered on and did not deliver fully. There are all types of quests from the Order Hall and, you know, other class-specific stuff that would send you back out into the old world. And I think a few of them remained, but many of them were removed or changed entirely to go into new Legion dungeons or areas, especially places out in the Broken Isles that did not have seem to have any point. Areas that had no quests or anything like that, you could tell they were made specifically for these quests. So it seems like they completely uh, decommitted to Azeroth, which is unfortunate. If there's one thing missing in modern WoW, I'd say it's the world itself. And I hope that 8.0 will take some small steps towards changing that, because if there was one thing that I definitely liked about the early expansions, it was that the world did feel alive, even in TBC. I think we may see some other small features as well talked about, but I do not expect to see huge zone reveals or detailed class changes like you might have seen in past BlizzCons, considering the final raid isn't even out yet in Legion, which I do expect to also be announced for the following week, if not further, one week further during the main WoW panel. But what will people be able to play at BlizzCon? That's the main question, right? There's evidence of a beta 8.0 launcher that arose a couple months ago and a larger-than-normal section partitioned for players to try games at the convention. I assume the biggest announcement at BlizzCon will be that they are finally adding sub-races to the game or perhaps new races outright like Ethereal. One way or another, I expect this to be the bulk of the playable content at BlizzCon itself. If they add sub-races, I expect it to happen via an in-game quest or event and not be something that you actually have to pay to switch your character towards. But of course, you will only be able to play one available sub-race per the main race, right? This, to me, uh, strikes as the most marketable and easily implementable feature that they can show off as playable. And I would expect the four races leaked earlier being Void Elf, Nightborn, High Mountain Torin and Light Forge Draenei to be featured at BlizzCon alongside their playable storylines. If there's more than this playable, then we clearly are much further along in the development cycle than any other expansion at this point, and that will give us a whole new thing to discuss after BlizzCon. One final thing I've seen talked about greatly is the potential of new specs being added in 8.0. My idea with this is to add four to five new specs to the game to be shared by every class thus giving more options, but not having to make a dozen new specs and keep them all properly balanced. People say that the point of sub-races from a gameplay standpoint would be to give the Alliance racials to Horde and vice versa, such as Shadow Meld and Arcane Torrent. So what if these specs are a way to give certain roles to the classes that they couldn't normally do? Warlock and Shaman Tank, finally? And perhaps a ranged Demon Hunter spec? Maybe a hunter and mage healer? Sounds interesting, right? It seems far-fetched when I speak of it now, so maybe not. But one thing I noticed with all the fabricated leaks appearing on various websites is that many of them pointed towards new specs. Surely someone was a legit source, right? Eh, maybe not, though. Either way, I think it would make sense if they were all void-themed, and we do see a void and old god expansion, kind of like what happened with Illyria. Outside of this, I predict them to announce that their public test will start after the new year, and invites will go out shortly after. If you'll remember back to the Legion Alpha when it started, a few months after, people who had killed Archimon Mythic were all invited. Literally everyone. I don't think anybody who had not killed Archimon before the date that they had chosen was not given, so I would expect a similar idea to carry over, so you better get rating. <laughs> better get into on Taurus if you're... Very interested in getting into the alpha there. Outside of World of Warcraft, I think there are two other things I would both like to see and expect to see at BlizzCon. The first thing is a second Warcraft film. Duncan Jones, the director, has been talking about the possibility since the spring, and it's been quite a while since the first film launched. It wasn't hugely successful, but it was way above what people expected it to be, so I see no reason not to make a second. If they announce it, I expect it to be about Thrall as a young adult, going through the events of his captivity and eventual escape from Durnhold. Here's hoping for a I am a slave no longer reference. I would not expect to see a Lich King film, but if it wasn't about Thrall, then an Arthas film would be the second most logical. Although thr trying to capture the entire events, turning him into the Lich King may be difficult to do in a single film. Perhaps just the human campaign from Warcraft 3, those events? Maybe that would make one film. The second thing would be a personal favorite of mine, a remastered Warcraft 3, preferably playable soon. 
It seems like the year for it, as Age of Empires was also announced for a remaster earlier this year at E3. There was also a patch for the original Warcraft 3 a few months ago, which is promising, and the fan-made map scene is still very much alive and well, with many amazing maps still being played regularly today. This is really a slam dunk for Blizzard, if you ask me, because when they finally do it, the community will rally around it, and it certainly has proven such as it's managed to keep this near 20-year-old product still alive. I expect it to grow even further with a remaster, It would be low effort for Blizzard as well, I'd imagine, but high reward. And it seems like they're already doing it with other titles. Maybe we'll even be able to see a Diablo 1 or Diablo 2 remaster? Anyway, that's everything I expect to see from Warcraft. There will probably be a bunch of stuff for other games like Hearthstone and Overwatch, but I don't have time to play them, so I couldn't even fathom predictions. There's one other thing I'd like to talk about, though, but before we do, I'm encouraging you guys to give your predictions as well. I'd love to see the comments section filled with ideas, uh, especially ones that are well thought out. I'll happily read them. And then we'll be able to discuss them this weekend after we finally get what we need to get out of BlizzCon. need to get out of BlizzCon. Okay. So, you see, the video is not titled what I would like to see at BlizzCon. It's titled what I expect to see. This is because there are two things that I would like to see at BlizzCon. One being Mythic plus leveling, as we discussed already, and maybe a long shot. The other one, I know, has zero chance of appearing at BlizzCon. People ask me about this constantly, so I'd really like to take some time to give my detailed thoughts on the matter, okay? I'd like to remind everyone that around this time last year, I was among the biggest supporters of the legacy server push for last year's BlizzCon. It seemed like multiple signs pointed towards them finally having an announcement, given the vanilla PvP rank Murloc pets, as well as some other language in the promos, as well as the work they did with Nostalrius, or the meeting they did had with Nostalrius, whatever you want to call that. It did not come to pass last BlizzCon and unfortunately likely will not for many years to come. It's a whole nother topic. But the number one thing I would like to see is a commitment for them to reestablish the old versions of the game, one way or the other, okay? This is the thing I want to see at BlizzCon more than anything else, because not being able to play old versions of the game, I just think is stupid. I really do. I understand they want to move forward with the game. That's fine. But the game doesn't just change in one way. It changes in dozens of dozens of ways. And many of the old things are just not there anymore. You can't see them. You can't play them. You can't explore them. So if you never played Classic, you can't do it legally. You know, you can't do it officially. So it's a big deal. And it's not just Classic, right? Like, I'm not here to just shill for Classic. But this is how I feel about the situation, you know? No other game. Like, if I wanted to go play pokemon gold i can go play pokemon gold you know what i mean it's not better it may not be better than the newer versions of the game but you don't just prevent people from playing old things you know sometimes they just want to be nostalgic and hang out sometimes people actually like what they're playing so i don't see a reason to hold people away from it i really don't i think it's become a bit contestuous at this point. I think it's a bit of an argument now. So anyway, I feel like there's numerous ways that Blizzard can benefit to having legacy servers, right? But it's important to admit, if you're serious about this, that the few hundred thousand individuals who expressed interest in legacy via a petition about a year and a half ago, that's not enough to convince Blizzard financially, okay? The people who want classic servers, there's there's a good amount of them, all right? But there's not more people who want to play Classic than would return if they just made a new expansion. So that's what you have to realize. They could just make a new expansion tomorrow. It could have almost nothing in it. And they will still get more people returning to the game than they would returning to the game if they made Classic servers. I promise you. I guarantee that. Okay? So just admit that. Okay? Just, Just do yourself a favor and stop perpetuating this delusion that if they release classic servers, there'd be millions of people returning and that they'd actually fucking stay. Okay? Because that's the biggest problem that we're going to talk about here. All right? That is the biggest problem. All right? So anyway, many of those people only signed the petition because of Soto Poppin. All right? People just seem to forget about that, that he was passing that around. Probably a lot of people signed it because of his stream. Many of them, like myself, signed it but still are already sub to WoW. So unless they make a separate sub for cla- for legacy servers, which I guess they could, but I wouldn't. Exp- I, I hope they wouldn't. Then they're not going to get that many people, all right? And many of them also only signed it as to say "fuck you" to Blizzard, 
right? And that they only play private servers because they are free. This is a, a staggering amount of people. You have no idea. If you don't go on private servers, you have no idea how many people are only there because it's free. It's, it's a lot of people. And those people have no intention on ever paying for a video game and certainly never to return to Blizzard. So that's a big problem, all right? This is the reality of things from my perspective. And to convince Blizzard otherwise, the entire community in the private server scene playing Classic WoW and old expansions needs a whole revamp, all right? I'm going to tell you three reasons why, okay? Number one, the community is comprised of a disproportionate amount of players who seemingly have no interest in playing the game seriously over a long period of time. That's just the way I see it. Whenever you look at Elysium Reddit, you know, now Lights Hope Reddit, whatever, you look at WoW private server Reddits, everybody's marveling at things like, oh my god, I forgot how cool this quest was. Or, oh wow, do you remember when leveling was hard? It's like, just saying shit that proves they are a noob, right? That's all there is. I mean, if you're marveling, if you're talking about how leveling is hard in class, you're just a noob. You don't know how to level fast. You don't know how to do it as efficiently as possible. You're unskilled at leveling. That's it. You're remarked, you're remarking over it being something you're inexperienced at, not the game itself. It's the same way in Legion, right? You could be bad at leveling in Legion. It's harder to be bad at leveling in Legion. But it is still possible to be like, oh my god, I never knew all of these things. And be remarkable. It's remarkable, you know? It's possible. So what really is happening here is most of the people playing on private servers who are like conversing about it are actually just noobs. And this is not what you would expect from a community of people playing a game, like going out of their way to play it illegally, you know? It tells me the main attraction of Classic in general are things that are no longer supported in the game at all, mostly including RPG elements, right? Because that's what these people are always going on about. Oh my God, do you remember when Hearthstone had a one-hour CD? I saw a fucking thread about that about two weeks ago. One of the guy's main points was that he was really... Like he he was happy that Hearthstone had a thirty uh, had, didn't have a thirty minute CD it was an hour CD instead. I was like, you're unbelievably like you're a noob, right? I mean, what are you talking about, dude? How is this a feature that you're excited about? It's unbelievable. If that was in the game now, people would laugh. It's just a joke, right? That's the epitome of why this community has nothing to respect in it, because a vast majority of the people are not going to want to actually be good at the game and improve over time and play it for a long period of time. They're just playing it like it's a new game, like The Witcher 4 just came out. And they're like, oh my God, this is marvelous. And then once they get to the level that they're satisfied with, that's that. They quit. You know what I mean? Once it actually becomes, once they actually get into the challenging parts, then they quit, you know? So if you're ever going to appeal to Blizzard, we need to explain why those RPG elements are important to us as players, but show them that you'll play the game for more than just yourself and those elements. Okay? You need to be looking to make lasting friendships in this game. You need to want to raid and play your character and progress your character weekly, if not daily, and be the best you can be for many, many, many months. Okay? You can't play and level to 40 and say you're having so much fun and then quit two weeks later. That's that's a casual. That's a noob. And that's the majority of the people advocating for classic servers right now. It's just the way I see it. It's just a fact. Okay. There's serious guilds on these servers, obviously, but so many of them are just made up of meme lords and people who are more interested in just fucking around than actually taking their characters seriously it's really, it's really a sad thing. It really is. So I, that's number one problem for me. Okay, number two is that the vocal portion of the community openly denounces Blizzard, the people who made the fucking game you're playing, okay, and modern WoW in general without any recognition of the facts. I feel like this is the biggest obstacle as people blindly hate on the 2017 version of both the company and the product constantly, despite any serious analysis displaying a deeply flawed product in classic World of Warcraft, combined with an evolving market shaping the progression of games into what Blizzard and World of Warcraft have become, okay? They didn't go down some malevolent route and kill the game on purpose, okay? People think that. People literally think that. But this is what 2017 gaming is like. The people who think otherwise are living in 2004. You can't do that if you want to play the game in 2017. 
if you don't, you just play on private servers for the rest of your life because that's all you're ever going to have. But I would like that to not be the case. You understand? <laughs> In order for Blizzard to implement a legacy concept, there will have to be some changes to the game and how it's played on private servers, okay? It's going to happen. You need to love World of Warcraft, the entire product. You can't just love 2004 patch 1.12. Newsflash, patch 1.12 was not a very good fucking patch. A lot of the stuff that was good about Classic changed, and a lot of the stuff that was good about TBC had yet to be implemented, but the goddamn patch 2.0 was less than two months away from 1.12. People don't seem to remember that. Everybody thinks, oh my god, Classic's so much better. Oh, I love Classic. Don't change anything. But less than two months later from the patch you're playing now that you're swearing by, the entire fucking game changes. So, I don't know. You're going to have to make some mental commitments to this if you want this, all right? You need to recognize that some things in Classic are hugely problematic and that it would require fixing for it to be a sellable product in 2017. The game was not finished. It was not implemented in a proper state in 2004. They were inexperienced at making it. In 2017, if you relaunch that game without World of Warcraft as a title, word for word, out otherwise, it's a flop. It's a joke. Think about that. One third of the specs can't even be played. Think about them compared just to TBC. It's a joke. It really is a joke. Some of these things will have to change if Blizzard is ever going to do this. And you're going to have to acknowledge that, okay? Class balance alone cannot stay if Blizzard will ever decide to pursue this. It's not, it's not going to happen. 90% of the work they do on expansions once they're launched is balancing, okay? So just get, get used to that, all right? And number three, I think, is easily, <laughs> it's just as important the quote-unquote moral authority of the private server community right now is basically zero, okay? I use that term with a bit pump, with a bit of pomposity, but what I mean to say is because of what has happened to the most mainstream private server Elysium recently, the trust and respect for those running these projects is essentially absent. Zero. Zilch. No, no respect whatsoever. I effectively have for these people. Okay? I don't want to go into that, but you can look this up yourself. Well, basically, the Nastarius team were the only people to ever run a private server properly. And they handed the keys to Blizzard in hopes that they would recognize that and will follow their lead. They didn't. Okay? And the reason I, they didn't, and I think it's very logical to say this, is because Blizzard has been monitoring how the private server scene has reacted to the snub from last BlizzCon with the relaunch of Elysium and the subsequent collapse less than a year later. Less than a year later, right? Legion's been out for over a year. <laughs> it's not collapsed. You know what I'm saying? So that's a pretty big deal. In one year, this project went from not existing to not existing, effectively. And a lot in between. What they would have seen is utterly shady dealings by this community. Complete backstabbing by those who apparently support it. Right? Key YouTubers involved here. And many aspiring projects failing hugely. A.K.A. the Gummy Server. It's a complete joke. If this is to change, we need a benevolent server leadership to unite all the tribes of World of Warcraft private servers and run it the right way. This has only ever happened with Nostarius, and there's a couple other projects out there that are trying their hand at it, kind of like Warmain, but they're not running it the right way. So, unfortunately, these three reasons are just too big to ignore, and I don't think Blizzard will have any interest in it until all three of them change. And all three of them will never change, because the people who are involved in this are just too stubborn, and they don't want to actually think about what it means to develop and create a game community. They just want to live in the past. So anyway, the way I'd like to see Blizzard do legacy servers would be to model a similar concept from D3 and other games like that that they use. The first idea here is to release a classic server and attempt to mirror the timeline of major releases so people can progress through content just like how Nostalrius and Elysium and other servers like that have done. Right, so MC is all you get, you know, first tier and then tier two comes out, you know, however Blizzard wants to do it. Then after a year or so, whatever the full timeline, you know, Nax is out, 
It's been cleared. That's that. Then we progress that realm into the Burning Crusade, something a lot of private servers are thinking about now. And do that same thing within the Burning Crusade. You know, release Kara and then whatever, you know, next few raids, Sunwell's out, whatever. Expansion's over. But when you release TBC, create a new classic realm. As it seems, there's a lot of people who have demonstrated that they, for some reason, seem to like re-leveling new tunes in classic every year. It seems to be the way of it. Every six months, people are asking for fresh servers. So uh, that's a good way to do it. Make a new classic realm when the first one goes to TBC. So people could start over in classic, etc. Then when TBC, the first server we talked about, progresses enough, it goes into Wrath of the Lich King. And the second classic server that we just talked about, that progresses into the Burning Crusade. And a third server comes out, a new classic realm. You understand? So every time, you know, every year or so, the expansion goes to the next one and a new classic server comes out. Okay. I think that's the best way to do it. You could follow this trend until the legacy idea halts, whatever that would be. Maybe Wrath of the Lich King. I don't know. People would have to agree on that. I'm not sure. I wouldn't mind it going all the way to Mists. I think WAD would be the first expansion that I would want no part of on a private server. But I would definitely love Mists of Pandaria. I think Mists of Pandaria is a great expansion. And I would not mind kind of starting a whole new WoW experience from day one, like I did when I was 15. But I'd imagine most people will stop caring after Wrath. So regardless, the problem there is, of course, player base. Since these private servers struggle, and people seem to care so much about player base... I think you would not have enough players playing these servers to keep them populated. And especially, you know, by the time the first server is on Wrath, most people would probably have either quit or gone back to Classic or something like that. So one way or the other is probably never going to happen. Okay. But that's the rant. I've been wanting to make this long as video. I've been wanting to make this topic uh, known for a while now. So anyway, thanks for watching. That's everything. Okay. If you guys are interested in discussing this further, let me know. Otherwise, we'll be talking about BlizzCon stuff after BlizzCon is effectively over, uh, after the major announces were made for sure. All right, so thanks for watching. If you made it through this entire video, you guys are awesome. Either way, we'll see you guys in the next one. It's one. It's one.